Right, this is the key to test number three. In the first part, you had six multiple choice questions. The first uh, problem says to state the domain and range of the following relation. Now remember, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. And so we have this finite set of ordered pairs, and there are four of these ordered pairs in this, in this relation. And you want to determine the domain and range. Now remember, the domain is the set of x-coordinates. So that's your x-coordinates. And then the range is your set of y-coordinates. And so I'm abbreviating quite a bit here and leaving some words out because um, of the time that we have on this key. All right, so, so I and remember when, when stating the domain and range, it only lists the elements only once. So we have the domain, so I'm going to just go ahead and write this here. So the domain for this relation would be negative 8, so it's just a set of x coordinates, negative 1, and negative 8 is already listed, so I'm not going to list it again, and then uh, 4. And then the range is the set of y coordinates, so we're going to use set notation, we use braces here, and these are elements, so notice there it's a finite set. So we have negative 2, um, 0, 1, and negative 7. And I'm not putting these in numerical order. It's fine if you just list it like that. All right, so you want to find which one of these has these two um, parts to it. So let's see, domains negative 8, negative 1, 4. So there's negative 8, negative 1, 4, negative 8, negative 1, 4. So it's one of these two. And the range is negative 2, 0, 1, negative 7. So that's going to be this one. So, yeah. so the answer for number one is C. Okay, number two, it says which of the following is not a function? Uh, which of the following is not a function? Remember, a function is a relation and it is a relation in which for each x coordinate there's exactly one y coordinate. And so we saw that with regard to if the graph of the function is, is given or the graph of the relation is given, you can use a vertical line test, vertical line test to determine if the relation is a function. So all these are relations because they're made up of a set of ordered pairs. So notice all these are ordered pairs on the graphs. So these are relations. Now the question is which one is not a function? So we use a vertical line test, and so notice that when I draw the vertical line, it intersects the graph only once. So that makes that a function. Because remember, for what that means is that when, when we have this x coordinate, there's only one y coordinate. For this x coordinate, there's only one y coordinate, and so on. So this passes a vertical line test. This passes a vertical line test. So it intersects the graph once everywhere. When we get here, notice that this fails the vertical line test because because if I look at when x is 2 right here, when x is 2, there are two y values. There's this y value and there's, oops, sorry, and there's this y value. So there are two different y values. And so this is not a function. So it fails the vertical line test. All right, so it's going to be D. So the answer number 2 is D. D is the only one that, that fails the vertical line test, so that's not a function. All right, number three, you want to state the domain. And so remember, if we have a rational expression, and if you want to find what values of x can, can't you use, what are the restrictions? So we used the word restrictions before. So to determine that, remember, you can never divide by zero. So what you do is you take the denominator. It doesn't matter what if that doesn't matter that the numerator is zero, the denominator cannot be zero. So you can't divide by zero. So you just take the denominator and just find out where that's equal to zero. So we set it equal to zero. And so when I solve for when I solve this linear equation, I get three x equal nine, which means that x is three. Because remember you divide both sides by three. And so when you reduce, you get x is three. All right. Now what that means is that is that my restriction, your restriction is that x cannot be three. That's what you just found. So I can use so I can use any number for x. I can I can plug in any number for x and I'll get a value for this expression. 
So the only value I cannot get an expression for is when x is 3. So we find the one that says the set of x's such that x is not equal to 3. And so that is uh, C. That's this one right here. That's number 3. The answer is C. Okay, number 4. Number 4, you have which of the following is a factor of 9x to the 9x squared minus 16. All right, so basically what you had to do there was factor factor uh, this this polynomial. So notice that this is the difference of two squares. So I can factor this as 3x minus 4 times 3x plus 4. And so notice that these are your factors. And so the question is, which one is a factor? Which So which one listed is a factor of um, this polynomial? And so you got to find uh, you got to find in here one of these so it's gonna be this one right here so B because B is a factor all right number five identify the least common denominator well first of all, what you had to do to identify the least common denominator was you had to factor the denominators so when I factor the first one I'm gonna get X minus 4 times X minus 4 over here, I can factor out an x, so that's x times x minus 4. Now remember, when you find your LCD, every factor listed has to be in the LCD. So notice there are, uh, I have the factor x minus 4, so I'm going to have to list it. I have x minus 4, I already have it listed. Then I have the factor x, so i got to list that, so it'll be x times x minus 4, and I already have x minus 4 listed. Now here's the other thing you got to remember. How many factors of x minus 4 were in this denominator? Well, there were two, and how many were here? There was one, so you need two of them. So your least common denominator has to include um, the, the greatest number of factors that you see here. So for x minus 4, there are two here, there are one there. So in order to find the least one, I've got to have, I've got to have this one, this number. So your least common denominator is x times x minus 4 squared. So x times x minus 4 squared is E. Number five, the answer is E. Okay, number six. So when you look at number six, you have which of the following represents the graph of x squared minus three? So remember, for x squared minus three, the best way to do this, and since there are choices, is just to think about the graph of x squared. So you have x squared which has vertex at the origin. So this is y equals x squared. And so if I want to graph x squared minus 3, basically what I'm doing is I'm just shifting this graph down three units. So I'm going to get something that looks like this. And so now the vertex is at the, uh, at the point 0, negative 3. And so you just find the one that deals, that deals with that. So if you look, that's going to be this one right here. So that's number 6, uh, number, letter C. Now really, the other, other way you could have done that was use a t-table. So if you use a t-table, so remember we're trying to graph x squared minus 3. So when I graph x squared minus 3, if I let x be 0, I get 0 squared, which is 0. 0 minus 3 is a negative 3. All right, so I'll plot this somewhere. Just real quick, I'm going to do it here. So here's 0, negative 3. If x is 1, I get, if x is 1, I get 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. So I plot the point 1, negative 2, so it's about here. If x is negative 1, now you got to remember about that, so you got to be careful. So y equals a negative 1 is being squared, so you got to put that in parentheses. Minus 3, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. And so remember the idea of symmetry as well. So, so just make sure you're using the idea of symmetry. So you see how it's starting to look. So it's going to start to look something like this. So when you plot more points here, you'll get something that looks like this, and that's that's this one right here. All right, number seven, you want to evaluate this function at x equal negative 2. So basically where we see the variable um, x, you're going to substitute negative 2. So I get f of negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 squared minus 5 times negative 2 plus 2. And so uh, using the word of operations, I'm going to go ahead and square first. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, so I get 16. A negative 5, think of this as plus a negative 5. So negative 5 times a negative 2 is a positive 10, and then plus 2. 
So I get 26 plus 2, which is 28. So f negative 2 is 28. So what that means is that if you were to graph this, and you're going to graph this next semester, but if you were to graph this when x is negative 2, your y value is 28. All right, here you want to simplify this. So the best way to simplify this rational expression, now here you're dealing with the rational expression, and the best way to simplify, the first thing you have to do to simplify rational expression is to factor. So when I factor the numerator, I'm going to get x minus 5 times x plus 2. And the denominator, that's the difference of two squares, so I get x minus 5 times x plus 5. And then once you factor, once you factor, you reduce. So I can reduce these factors here. These are common factors. And so x minus 5 divided by x minus 5, remember that's 1. That's a value 1 right here. So I'm going to put 1s in their places. And so 1 times x plus 2 is x plus 2. And then 1 times x plus 5 is x plus 5. And I can't reduce anything else, so you're done. So the answer is x plus 2 divided by x plus 5. All right. So number 9. Number 9, again, you want to um, you want to factor this. Now, let me make a point here. Many of you, you see that numerator, 4, 4 minus x squared. Many of you are factoring this as x minus 2 times x plus 2. That's not true. Because when you, when you, if you follow this out, you get x squared, and then the outer and the inner. Well, the outer is 2x, the inner is negative 2x, and the last is negative 4. So these right here, that's 0, that sums up, sums up to be 0, so you get x squared minus 4. These two are not the same thing. 4 minus x squared is not the same as x squared minus 4. So, so for those of you that factored this as this, that's not true. 4 minus x squared and x squared, x squared, minus, 4, x squared minus 4, those are opposites. They're not the same thing. All right, so what you should have done there was leave it as 4 minus x squared and factor it as you see it. So that's 2 minus x times 2 plus x. And then when you factor the denominator, that's going to be, uh, let's see, that's 2x, x. Um, so I'm going to need a 3 here. Nope, I'm going to do 3 here and the 2 here. Um, so remember, you can't put the 2 here because then that would mean that you could factor out a 2, which meant that you could factor out a 2 here, and you can't. So I had to put the 2 here. And then uh, the last sign's positive, so it means that these signs here are the same, and they can both be this middle sign. And before you go on, always check this. 2x times x is 2x squared. The outer is a negative 4x. The inner is a negative 3x. When you add them up, you do get negative 7x. And negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. All right, and then you want to reduce your factors. Now, this remember, we did talk about opposites, so you got to keep that in mind. All right, so we talked about opposites. So we, we, we learned that negative 4 divided by 4, those are opposites, negative 4 and 4 are opposites, and so when you look at their quotient, that's negative 1. So when you look at 2 minus x, even though you don't see it exactly here as one of these factors, 2 minus x, the opposite of 2 minus x is x minus 2. The opposite of 2 minus x, that's all you're doing when you have a polynomial. It's just changing the signs. So that's negative 2 plus x, which is, is, which is equivalent to x minus 2, which is what this is. So what we did was um, when, when you reduce these, we'll make this 1, because remember you're supposed to get a negative 1, and we'll make the numerator, the, the numerator factor negative 1. And that's about all you can reduce, and so you get you get negative 1 times 2 plus x, just like that, divided by 2x minus 3. Now that's one way to write it, or you could have said, or you could have distributed and you could have said negative 2 minus x divided by 2x minus 3. Or if you wanted to, you could have written this as negative out here, and then just say 2 plus x divided by 2x minus 3, just as long as, as you make, make this negative symbol on the outside of this rational expression. Um, now, notice I keep putting 2 plus x. You could have said x plus 2. It doesn't matter. Or negative like this, x plus 2 divided by 2x minus 3. So these are all ways of writing the same answer. 
or you could have said right here, you could have said um, negative x minus 2 divided by 2x minus 3. So again, that, that, there, there's a multitude of ways to write the answer. But you had to use the fact that in here you had to use opposites. Alright, number 10. Let's go ahead and factor. Again, you're dealing with rational expressions. So you're going to factor this. To simplify, you're going to see if you can factor it, and you can. So when I factor this, I'm going to get x uh, minus 3 times x minus 2. That's the numerator. The denominator, you have two of these, and we'll just list them twice, just like this. Because x minus 2 squared means this. And then I'm going to reduce. So the only factors I can reduce are, are these. Now remember, you can't reduce both of these because you only had one in the numerator. So you can only reduce one that's in the denominator. And so you get x minus 3 divided by x minus 2. That's the answer there. Okay, number 11. All right, number 11. Okay, this time you're multiplying rational expressions. So again, same thing. First thing you do is reduce. So you're going to factor the numerator. Or you're going to factor as much as possible. So over here, I can write this as x minus 2 times x plus 2. And the denominator I can factor out in x. So that's x times x minus 3. Um, here I can't do anything. I can't factor this. The GCF in both cases are 1 still. And so let's reduce. So I have an x minus 2 as my first factor here. I can reduce it with this one. So when I, when I reduce them, I get factors of 1. Here I have x plus 2. I don't have an x plus 2 anywhere as a factor in the denominators. I have x minus 3. I have a factor of x minus 3 in the denominator here, so I can reduce those. And so you're left with 1 times x plus 2 times 1, which is x plus 2, divided by x times 1 times 1, which is x. So I get x plus 2 divided by x. Number 12 all right, what I'm going to do here, since, since these are all monomial factors, I don't see any addition or subtraction symbols like I did here. Um, what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and multiply, um, multiply these two rational expressions first. So 3 times 6 is 18. x squared times x cubed, remember the product rule from a previous course. So x squared times x cubed, when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. So that's x to the fifth. And then y to the fourth times y to the first is y to the fifth. And over here, I'm going to get 2 times 5 is 10. x times x is x squared, and then y cubed. And then I'm going to use a quotient rule. Um, that's one way of doing it. But just remember some stuff from last semester. Quotient rule. That says that when you divide like bases, so let's say a to the m divided by a to the n, then that's a to the m minus n, so you subtract exponents. And so basically, um, when I look at this part here, see x to the fifth divided by x squared. Um, let me go ahead and first of all reduce these. So that'll be, so 2 into um, 10 is 5. And 2 into 18 is 9. And then over here, that's going to be x to the 5 minus 2. And then y to the 5th uh, power minus 3. So when you divide like bases, you subtract exponents. And so I get I get 9x and then 5 minus 2 is 3. And 5 minus 3 is 2 divided by 5. And that would be the answer there. And that's one way is just to use this idea. The other way, since the exponents are not... Um, since the exponents are not huge, you could, so you could have done this. You could have said 18, and then x to the fifth, that means x times x times x times x times x. Now remember, that's not the most efficient way. This would have been what you wanted to use. And then y, there are five factors of y. So I'm going to list five factors of y here. One, two, three, four, five. And then in the denominator, you get 10, and then two factors of x, and then two factors of y. And then we reduce. Reduce common factors just like we did here. So 10, uh, 2 into 10 is 5, 2 into 18 is 9, and then these reduce, these reduce. That's about all I can reduce here. Now in terms of y's, I can reduce these, I can reduce these, and I can reduce these. And so basically what's left in the numerator is this. In the numerator you have 9 times 1 times 1 times x times x times x. So I get 9x cubed. And then y times y is y squared divided by 5. And all these are factors of 1, so 5 times all these 1s is just 5. All right, so you get 9x cubed y squared divided by 
5. Number 13 is a, your, your dividing rational expressions. Okay, the first thing you need to do first is change this division and multiplication. And so remember the way you do this is you, the, the first rational expression stays the same. And then we're going to change this to multiplication, but when we change the multiplication, you got to take the reciprocal of the second fraction, or, or the fraction that follows the division symbol. So that's x minus 10 divided by x squared minus 11x plus 28. And then you're going to factor now, so that kind of looks like the previous problem. So you're going to factor. So the, when I factor this, that's going to be x plus 9 times x uh, minus, let's see, 7. Okay. And then over here, that's x minus 3. I'm going to keep this as x minus 10. And over here, that's going to be x minus 7 times x minus 4. And then I reduce common factors, and so it looks like the only, let's see, so that will be, I can reduce those, and that's about all I can do. Um, oh, I'm sorry, right here, that was x minus 10, excuse me. I'm not sure why I said x minus 3. So that's x minus 10. Alright, and then I can reduce those. And so I get x plus 9 times 1 times 1 is x plus 9. And then 1 times 1 times x minus 4 is x minus 4. So I had x plus 9 divided by x minus 4. Over here you have a division again. Um, so I'm going to change its multiplication first. So I'm going to keep this fraction as it is. Change the multiplication. So times the reciprocal. So 4m squared plus 20m divided by 7m squared. And then my factor. So when I factor... Um, I can factor out a 2 here, so that's 2 times m plus 5 times, and then over here I can factor out a 4m, so that's 4m times m plus 5 divided by 7m squared. Alright, so then let's see, so I have a factor of 4, which I can reduce with this 2, so let me go ahead and rewrite this, so it'll be 1 over 2 times m plus 5 times 4m times m plus 5, divided by 7m squared. Alright, so when I when I factor, uh, when I reduce, I can reduce these, so that's, that's uh, going to be 1, 2 into 4 is 2, and then this m I can reduce with, with one of these. There are two of those right here, because remember that means m times m. So as that be 1, I'm going to be left with only one factor of m left. And then the m plus 5s I can reduce, and so I get 1 times 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2. And then 1 times 1 times 7 times just one factor of m is 7m. All right. Number 15. Another division uh, problem. So you're going to change this multiplication. So I get um, x squared minus x minus 6 divided by x squared plus 6x plus 9 times the reciprocal, so x plus 3, divided by x squared minus 4. And then factoring, I'm going to get x minus 3 times x plus 2. Over here, I'm going to get, this is a perfect square trinomial, so I'm going to get x plus 3 times x plus 3 times, and then um, this is going to stay as x plus 3. Now this is the difference of two squares, so I get x minus 2, x plus 2. Alright, so first thing you do is factor. Then we we'll reduce. So x minus 3 is your first factor here. I don't have any in the denominator. x plus 2, I have an x plus 2 here. x plus 3, and I have two of those, so I'm going to use 1. And so the answer going to be x minus 3 times 1 times 1 is x minus 3. 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 2 is x plus 3 times x minus 2. And so just leave it like this. So x minus 3, go ahead and leave it in factored form over x plus 3 times x minus 2. All right, number 16, you want to subtract these rational expressions now, but notice that the denominators are the same. So since they're the same, it's, on the next test they're going to be different, but on this one the denominators are the same. So, and also remember you're subtracting this, so you got to be careful with the subtraction symbol. 
So since the numbers are the same, I can write this as one. I can write this as one rational expression. So the um, the denominator will stay m squared plus seven m plus six. Now in the numerator, you're going to get three m plus fifteen minus you're subtracting all of this. So you got to put that in parentheses. Equal. And then let's get rid of the parentheses. So I get three m plus fifteen minus m. So basically you're just driven in the negative through here. Minus three divided by m squared plus seven m plus six. And then combine like terms in the numerator, I get three m minus m is two m. Fifteen minus three is twelve divided by m squared plus seven m plus six. All right now remember you want to simplify as much as possible. So you want to factor. So I can factor in the numerator, I can factor out a two. I get 2 times m plus 6. In the denominator, I can factor this as, let's see, m plus 6, m plus 1. And so the m plus 6 divides out. You'll have your factors of 1's in their place. And so you get 2 divided by m plus 1. So 2 divided by m plus 1. And number 17. All right, you want to solve this by factoring. So notice this is a quadratic equation. And all you know how to do at this point is to solve this by factoring. Now, of course, and you know now know a few other things, but for this test, you always, always follow directions and solve by factoring. All right, and when you solve by factoring, we're going to use the zero factor property as well. All right, so when I solve this by factor, now first of all, make sure it's in it's in standard form, so you need zero on the other side. So everything is fine so far. So I'm just going to factor this now. Equals zero. Don't forget you must say equals zero because you still have an equation. So three x x, and then for four, let's see, four one or two two. So two two. Um, it turns out that this will be plus and this will be minus. All right, so always check, 3x times x is 3x squared. The outer is 6x, the inner is a negative 2x, you get 4x. And then negative 2 times positive 2 is a negative 4. All right, now, you have two factors whose product is 0, so that's where the 0 factor property comes in. So one of these must be 0. So 3x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0. And so when you solve these linear equations, so notice you have a quadratic that ended up with 2 linear. That's how you you're going to solve this, I get 3x equal 2, so when I divide both sides by 3, one of my solutions is 2 thirds. Over here, when I subtract 2, the other solution is negative 2. So I get x equal 2 thirds, x equal negative 2. <clears throat> now over here, the difference between 17 and um, 18 is that uh, 17, it was already in standard form, meaning 0 was already in the side. Here, that's not the case. So you gotta, so you gotta um, add two to both sides. So I'm gonna add two first. And so I get nine x squared minus nine x plus two equals zero. And then we're gonna factor it. Don't forget that's an equation, so you gotta say equals zero. So three x, three x, um, two, one. The last sign's positive, so these have to be the same sign. They both mean negative. And always check, the outer is negative 6x, the inner is a negative 3x, and when I'm up, I get negative 9x. So now I can use the zero factor property. So I have two factors whose product is zero, so one of these must be zero. So 3x minus 1 equals zero, 3x minus 2 equals zero, and you solve, e solve each linear equation. So 3x equals 1, which means x is 1 third. Over here, 3x equals 2, which means x is 2 thirds. Um, so, so then the solution is x equal one third, x equal two thirds. All right, number nineteen. All right, nineteen. Uh, part three. Um, this is a short answer. So no work's needed there. Um, you didn't have to show any work. Now here you're simplifying the square root. Now these are the easy kinds. Um, so base, remember the the rule when you simplify this. The rule when you simplify this is that if you have the a root of b to the, let's say, m, then that becomes a rational, you can write this as rational exponent as, as b to the 
m divided by a. So the index is going to be the numerator, uh, the denominator, and the exponent is the numerator. And so when you do this, notice, notice the square root of x to the 12 times y to the 6 is the same thing as saying the square root of x to the 12 times the square root of y to the 6. And then the square root of x to the 12, I can use this ID here. So that's x to the 12 divided by 2, and that's y to the 6 divided by 2. And that's the ID you're going to use with all these. And so 12 divided by 2 is x to the 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so that's y to the third power. So I get x to the 6, y to the third. And remember, we're assuming that all these exponents, uh, all these variables represent real numbers. So you don't have to worry about absolute value, any absolute values in here. Here, that's the easy kind as well, the cube root. So what I would do, and you're going to use this idea, but what, what you might want to do first is rewrite this as a cube root of 27 times a cube root of x to the 9th times a cube root of y to the 12th. And so then you can quickly get your answer. The cube root of 27 is 3. The cube root of x to the 9th, using our rule here, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So you get x cubed. And then y to the 12th divided by 3 is uh, 4. Here, um, what you might want to do is, is rewrite this as the cube root of the numerator divided by the cube root of the denominator. And so the numerator, that's the cube root of x to the 15th times the cube root of y to the 6th. The denominator, that's the cube root of z to the third power. And so these are the easy kinds because because um, 15 divided by 3 is 5, so I get x to the 5th, and then that's y to the 2nd, divided by z. So you get x to the 5th, y to the 2nd, divided by z. Alright, here you want to factor these, so now we're factoring here, so you had several problems on factoring. So you have four terms, you want to use, you want to use grouping here, so you can factor by grouping. And so you can, in the first group, you can factor out a 9v squared. You get uh, 9v squared times 1 is this, and then 9v squared mind, uh, times a negative 2. Is, oops, sorry, something, oh, okay. So you had to make a correction here. The correction was that this was supposed to be 9v cubed. All right, so 9v cubed is a correction. So this will be uh, v minus 2. And over here, you can factor out, always factor out that middle sign, so you can factor out a negative 7 times z minus 2. And so these are your common factors, so factor that out, so you get v minus 2 times 9v squared minus 7. All right, so that, that's what you write here. Okay, this one, you had to use the fact that this was the, um, the difference of two cubes. So what you need to do first was kind of figure out what your f and l were, and remember in factoring the difference of two cubes, the formula is, is going to be f minus l times, so it's a binomial times a trinomial, times l squared, I'm sorry, times f squared plus fl plus l squared. And so 2x times itself three times is 8x uh, cubed, and then 3 times itself three times is 27. So there's your f and there's your l, and it's just a matter of you plugging in, into this, this formula. So I'm going to get f minus l, so that's 2x minus 3 times, and then this says I take f, which is 2x, and I square, so I multiply by itself, so 2x times 2x is 4x squared plus <clears throat> f times l, so f times l means I take 2x multiplied by 3, so that's 6x. And then plus l squared, which means 3 times 3, which is 9. Okay, and that will be the answer there. All right, you want to factor these. So notice, so all these are factoring right here. So this is the difference of two squares. So I can factor this as a 2x minus 3y times 2x plus 3y. So that was an easy one. Okay, here, let's see. So the, remember, you always must look for GCF. GCF is 1 here. I should have said the same thing here. GCF is 1. Always look for GCF first. GCF first. 
All right, so let's try factoring it as this first, and then let's see. So six, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use either six one or three two. So let's use three and two. I know that I cannot put a three here because then I can factor out a three, which means I can factor out a three here, in which I cannot because the GCF is one. GCF here is one. So I'm gonna put the two here and the three here. The last sign is negative, so these signs are gonna be different, and the um, larger of the outer and the inner, so the outer here is 9x, the inner is 4x, and so 9x is bigger than uh, 4x, so the 9x has to be positive. And then this will be negative. And I always check, so that's a positive 9x, that's a negative 4x, and I get 5x. So there's your answers, 3x minus 2 times 2x plus 3. Okay, over here, you're going to factor out a 3, so the GCF is 3, so you have to do that first. You have to factor out a 3. And so I get 3 times x squared plus 10x plus 25. And so when I factor this trinomial, I'm going to get 3 times x plus 5 times x plus 5, or 3 times x plus 5 squared. Now, what some of you did was this. So you didn't you didn't do the GCF first, which is fine, but you have to take care of it at the end. So some of you went from here to this. So you said 3x uh, plus 15 times um, uh, x plus 5. That's what you did. So that's how you factor this. And so if you check it, it does it does give you this back. Um, because 3x times x is 3x squared. The outer is 15x. The inner is 15x, which gives me 30x. And then 15 times 5 is 75. But the problem is that that's not the answer because you can look at this right here and you can still factor out a 3. So you had to make sure that all your factors were, were prime, so, which meant that, that you can't do anything else to these factors. So the answer so you should have you needed to have factor out of 3 out of here. All right, and finally, 27, all you're doing here is just, where we're, uh, is just evaluating this rational expression when x is negative 2. And so when x is negative 2, I'm going to get 3 times negative 2 plus 8 divided by. And the purpose of this one was just to see if you remembered, if you remembered that, that when you are raising especially if you're if you're raising it to an even power, a negative number to an even power, that you put this in parentheses. Because if you didn't put in parentheses, you probably would have said, right here, you probably would have said, some of you did, some of you said that's negative 4. That is not negative 4. And the reason you did that was because when, when you substituted, when you substituted negative 2, this is what you had. And so either you use your calculator, you wasn't you weren't thinking, and which and and you said negative two like this squared is negative four plus five, and you said that was one, which is not the case. Now this is, I should say that is true, but that's not what this is. This says you're squaring x, so you had to put that in parentheses. So so that should have been negative six plus eight divided by four plus five. And so 8 plus 6 is 14, and then 4 plus 5 is 9. So you get 14 divided by, oops, sorry, that's negative 6, excuse me. So negative 6 plus 8 is 2, so you get 2 ninths as the answer. Okay, so don't forget about this. So the purpose of this one was just to see if you remember to put negative 2 in parentheses, because if you didn't, this is what you would have gotten, which, which is true. Negative 2 squared like this is negative 4, but that's not what this is saying. This is saying you got to square negative 2. When you do this, you got to remember, when you do this, when there's no parentheses, what that means is you're squaring 2 only, and that becomes negative 4. Okay, so that takes care of um, test number 3, the key to test number 3.